Hey, good afternoon, guys. It's Jimmy from Primer is Best, and uh, thought I'd tell you a story about how I wound up here in East Tennessee. Just to recap, if you're new to the channel, my folks, my parents, and all my relatives are from North, are from Georgia and Northern Alabama, Gunnersville, Boaz, uh, you know, Gadsden area, Abbottville. You know, northern part of Georgia. That's where all my folks are from. My mom and dad uh, have both passed away. And I, I'm the only one left in my family. I had a brother and sister that were younger than me. They're both passed away as well. I'm the last one left. So, uh, and I'm 66. In case you're wondering how old I am. But I uh, thought I'd uh, tell you how I wound up here in uh, Tennessee, and I'm glad that I'm here, let me tell you. Like I said, my folks are from Alabama. My mom and dad grew up together, went to high school together, and uh, when my mom was 17, uh, just graduated, and uh, my dad was 18, they got married, and they moved to Chicago because they've done farm work. They were poor as dirt, even my my relatives, they were all poor as dirt, just, you know, growing cotton and, uh, you know, didn't have much and didn't have no money and uh, at all, you know, just, my, I think my dad's family had uh, seven kids all together, including my dad and, uh, you know, brothers and sisters, well, all, br all brothers and one sister and uh, my mom, uh, it was just her and her younger sister. So anyway, they got married. They moved to Chicago. My dad started working in a in a factory, and uh, my and going to school at night to be an engineer. My mom was working a job as well. And about a year and a half later, here I come. So uh, anyway, my my mom and dad were. They they stayed working all the time, lived in an apartment building that got broke into a lot, had their car stolen. You know, uh, one time we were in a, I remember this, you know, because I was old enough to remember. Uh, if you watched a few videos back, I told you that someone stole our car as a 49 Ford. Well, my dad wound up buying a 56 Ford. It was a two-door 56 Ford red and white is a pretty car had to afford a dog dish hubcaps i mean nothing fancy just a you know means of transportation and uh, we parked i forgot what we were doing we for one thing we went grocery shopping and uh i don't know why i have no clue but we were in downtown chicago and uh i don't know why my mom and dad i don't know what store they were going into but they just went grocery shopping and uh, they had the groceries in the back seat. Downtown Chicago, people, the sidewalks are just packed with people. I remember, and uh, my, we come back out to the car just for being gone a short time. I don't know what store they went into or whatever, but somebody had broke out the glass and stole all the groceries out of the 56 Ford. So, I mean, my mom and dad were living hand to mouth, meaning they didn't have any extra money. So, somehow we got by all that. Anyway, uh, my mom uh, pretty much abruptly had to quit working because I was, I don't remember this part, and I'm glad that I don't, but my mom, uh, I was staying at a babysitter's house, and I was a little feller, and uh, my mom got the noticing that I was having cigarette burns on my body, different places, just cigarette burns. So uh, I don't know if the babysitter got mad at me or, or what. You know, fortunately, like I said, I don't remember, but I had cigarette burns on my body, you know, and my mom, I mean, you don't, they just moved up there, you know, and didn't really know anybody, didn't have no relatives or nothing that lived up there. So uh, my mom... Uh, had to quit work because she didn't know anybody and uh, that she trusted and obviously this babysitter was not to be trusted. I I don't know if I was a 
crying a lot or or what I, I remember that uh you know my, my they's having trouble with my baby formula uh you know i was i guess you call it colic colicky or whatever you know the 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 baby formula didn't sit well with with me on my stomach whatever i'm just telling you what i was told anyway my mom uh you know abruptly quit work and kept me full time at home she was a stay at home mom after that and uh you know so i i'm just glad i didn't, don't remember getting cigarette burns all over all over me but anyway uh it was a tough time for my mom and dad and at the age of uh 10 you know 11 ish it was 1967 and i was born in 57 so uh we my dad like i said he was a, a mechanical engineer he got a job here in East Tennessee, and uh, my dad traveled all the time, uh, you know, working on machinery. He he was he was pretty smart, and uh, I wish I could have inherited <laughs> some of his smarts, but I didn't. But my dad was a pretty smart feller, especially when he was younger, and uh, you know he uh, looked up on a job here in East Tennessee, and they offered him a job to to move down here. And uh, what prompted that move, a big part of it, according to my mom and dad, was because, like I said, I was 10 or 11 years old, and we were living in Chicago, like I said, but there was a little old girl that I was had a little crush on, and her name was, I'll just say her first name, her name was Sandy, and little old cute girl had brown hair, you know, curly hair, and, uh, you know, uh, of course, I never spoke to her. I was too shy, and she was too shy, but I think she liked me, too, because she lived a few houses down from us across the street, and I could see her peek at the window uh, looking at me when I was outside, and I'd peek and look at her, you know, blah, 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 one of those little crushes from grammar school. Anyway, I think that kind of played on my mom and dad's mind, like, because, like I said, they grew up together went to school together and got married and my mom and dad got to thinking well what if what if jimmy met somebody here you know went to school with and got married you know repeat performance so to speak so my mom and dad you know started really looking for someplace else to move down south and luckily my dad was offered a job here in east tennessee and that's where we wound up at and uh i'm glad we moved here in the summer, in the summer months, when my, when we got to go visit my grandparents in Alabama, that was the best times of my life. Just being able to run free on the farm, run through the grass, have the dogs chasing you, chasing chickens now and again, you know, just feed feed the mule, slop the hog, you know, uh, just go to the bathroom outside. It didn't matter, and. Uh, I'd climb up in a in a plum tree every now and again when it was ripe and I remember my grandfather he he never would call me Jimmy he called me Jim. Hey Jim if you eat too many of them plums you're going to get a stomach ache. You know he just talked real calm and you know he 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 was the best. Anyway uh sure enough he was right I'd sit up there eating them plums till I got sick <laughs> but you know he never did say, you know, hey, Jim, I told you so. But he always called me Jim, never Jimmy, just Jim. So, uh, you know, he always, uh, we had a good time when we visited uh, northern Alabama. And anyway, uh, I lived all year when we lived in Chicago. I lived all year long to go visit my grandparents on the farm. You know, it was so much fun. You know, I could ride the mule We'd go to the little country store and get a, you know, I'd get a, a Yoo-Hoo chocolate drink, you know, Yoo-Hoo, and it was, it was the best. I mean, just going from city life, you know, buildings everywhere, you know, keep your hands to yourself, don't speak, to going down south here, uh, you know, Alabama, Tennessee, Georgia, you know, you when you, when you meet an oncoming car or truck, you know, you throw your finger up or throw your hand up. They wave back at you. I mean, everybody, and you didn't even know them. I mean, it's just, it's the way it was 
back in the day in the 60s and I'm sure 70s too but not so much anymore even here in East Tennessee I can wave at somebody throw my finger up or my hand and you very seldom get a response because well most people are probably looking on their uh, cell phones as they're driving but it was the best times of my life and I'm so glad that my mom and dad had the wisdom enough to get me out of that place of Chicago. Now, if you live in Chicago and you love it, I'm proud for you, but I don't have any desire at all to go to a big city like Chicago or anything, even to visit. I don't want to go. The world's gotten so crazy, and I don't have no desire to do that. But uh, I'll just uh, settle on uh, <laughs> I'll just settle on memories of it. Y'all have a great day. Thanks for listening to me. And uh, you're watching Primer this best. If you'd like and subscribe, I'd appreciate it. Got uh, I'm on Facebook, Primer this best. Instagram, Primer this best. Got a second YouTube channel called Man on a Budget. And I'm on Instagram, Man on a Budget 1. If you'd like to check me out, I appreciate it. Let me know if you kind of like these stories. I've got a bunch. But uh, I don't want to bore you to death. And I hope I didn't on, hope I didn't bore you to death on this one. God bless y'all. The Lord is in charge. And uh, here I am today. Hope he's watching over you too. God bless y'all. Catch you in the next one. I'll see y'all later.